Hello, Stitchy friends. My name is Andrew, and this is The Runner Stitcher. This is a channel primarily about cross-stitching. I'm also going to throw in a little bit of running, since I am a runner. Um, you can kind of see the, some of the medals burned in the background. Um, so it'll be a little bit about running, but mostly about cross-stitching. Um, this is my very first floss tube, floss tube number one. <laughs> Here we go. Um, so I'm going to just tell you a little bit about my cross-stitch journey, how I got started, um, and kind of what I've been doing up until this point. Um, so I got back into cross-stitch back in May 2023, so just earlier this year. So still very new to everything. Um, and on that line, if you hear me say something that's wrong, <laughs> or you have any tips for me, or you think, what is he doing? This is crazy. Um, just let me know because <laughs> I could use all the tips and guidance I can get. Um, no, but when I was little, um, my mom and my aunt used to cross stitch a lot. So they would use waste canvas and cross stitch on sweatshirts and then they would sell them um, at different flea markets in the area or the holiday market at my school. Um, and I got really into watching them do it because they, they loved it. Um, they would probably make like 20 or 30 sweatshirts a year and um, sell them at the market. So I did a few projects when I was littler, maybe in middle school. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any of those anymore. I don't know if they got thrown away or got lost or maybe I never even finished one, <laughs> which is very possible. Um, but yeah, so I did it for a little bit back then and then kind of drifted away from it and didn't pick it up for a while. But this past year, I've gotten back into trying crafty things, different crafting. Um, I did diamond art for a little bit. I did um, latch hook for a little bit. And then I rediscovered cross stitch. And I think that is definitely my, my first love. <laughs> but um, yeah, so then in May, I started picking it back up and I've, I've just been loving it and kind of diving headfirst into the new world of cross stitch <laughs> that it's very different from what I remember my mom and my aunt doing years ago. Um, but so that, that's my sort of journey, my, um, yeah, my journey along this way. So today I'm going to just kind of talk through a little bit about the things that I've done. I'm going to go through my fully finished objects, my FFOs that I've got, um, that I started since May. Um, I've got two finishes that um, are done, but they're just not framed or full, fully finished objects yet. Um, so I'll show you those two, and then I'll go through the whips that I'm working on right now. Um, obviously no new starts since everything is new to you, <laughs> so uh, I don't have any starts. Um, and then I'll go through a little bit of the patterns that I've acquired and um, some of the, the kits I've picked up or fabric I've, I've picked up to kind of work on in the future. And that'll be the video. And hopefully I'll keep it pretty short. Um, I don't want to keep you here forever. <laughs> but um, first, I, I want to just start by saying that how much I have enjoyed watching others um, floss tube videos. So I didn't even know floss tube existed when I started cross stitching again back in May, but discovering it and um, it's been just been so inspiring. Um, it started with Teresa Little Stitcher, which I'm sure everybody watches because she has great tutorial videos. It seems like she's been doing this for a long time. She has a lot of, of floss tube videos, um, but she really kind of just brought the energy and the, the enjoyment of cross stitching back to me, which was fun. And then along the way, I discovered other floss tubers that I've been loving. So the very first one, um, other than Teresa Little Stitcher, was Chris Cross Stitch. And um, I discovered him, and I went back to the very first video that he filmed, like maybe two years ago, two and a half years ago, and I watched all of them. <laughs> I just binge watched them like it was a TV show, because he's so entertaining. Um, he, if you haven't, please check him out because he's great. Um, not only is this his stitching superb, and it's really fun to see the projects he's working on, what he's picking, um, but he always adds a level of heart and fun to his videos. Um, sometimes you'll cry, sometimes you'll laugh, you never know, <laughs> but um, they're always really good and always heartfelt. So Chris Crossstitch, thank you for sharing um, all of the art that you're doing and um, for sharing it with us. Um, a few other ones, I, I've been watching Cam the Stitcher, um, and she is incredible at doing her color conversion. So I feel like almost every video I watch of hers, she's got another color conversion that she did, and they're all beautiful. It's amazing. So Cam, you've been inspiring as well. Um, thanks for sharing your, your art. Uh, finally, Bernadette from Burn Stitches. 
Um, I found her because she has been doing some larger pieces, uh, Mirabilia's, Bella Filipina's, and I was just blown away. They're so beautiful. I cannot wait to start my first my first one. So she's also been really helpful. Um, I've had questions along the way. She might be tired of them. <laughs> Sorry if you are. But um, no, she's been great, and she's been willing to like answer them and um, kind of give me her, her tips or input along the way. The final one I want to call out today, and I've watched a lot more, so I'm not trying to not include anybody, but the last one I want to call out is Janet Jabber. Um, she is just a light of positivity. Every time her video comes on, um, she's got a new one. I, I can't wait to watch it. Um, her stitching is incredible, but the light that she shines through that video is what I love. She's always positive, even when she's not feeling well. Um, and just really brings out the fun in this craft. And that's, that's what I want to continue with. So Janet, thank you for sharing that as well. Um, but again, so many other ones, I'm completely inspired by all the art that everyone is doing, um, and sharing on floss tube. So I'm going to use this for myself as kind of a diary of my cross stitch, and hopefully you guys will enjoy it as well. Um, but I do have a little bit of imposter syndrome. <laughs> I, I don't feel like I'm ready to be picking my fabrics for certain pieces or definitely not doing a color conversion yet, but maybe someday I'll get there. We'll see. Um, so anyway, thank you to floss tube community. I'm excited to be coming, maybe a part of it. So to get started, I want to go through my FFOs, my fully finished objects. Um, I'm going to start with the very first one that I finished. This was a small project that was given to me to kind of start cross stitch again. Um, it's, it was a unicorn kit. I don't know the designer. Um, I'm not sure who, who did this. Um, since it was a gift, I, I don't know. I don't have the information anymore. Um, but it's a super cute unicorn. This was a smaller project. It's done on 14 count Ada. Um, since it was a kit, it came with everything. The, the Ada, the DMC, um, everything you needed to kind of complete it. So here is my very first finish. I don't know if you can see it with the glare. The colors on this are so pretty. Um, yeah, I really just love doing it. It reminded me of My Little Pony. Um, but you would not believe how many different shades of brown are in, in the unicorn, um, which kind of give it the detailing that's there. Um, but I'm really happy with how this came out. I'm happy with my stitches for my first sort of project back. Um, when I finished this at first, I was trying to decide, like, I had done everything but the back stitch, and I was like, do I want to do the back stitching or not? I'm not sure. I liked how it looked without it. And um, I decided I would just go ahead and do it. And wow, that really made it pop. So I think I was just afraid of backstitching, to be honest. But now that I've done it once, I sort of know what to expect. And um, it's, it's really not that bad. It's actually kind of fun. And then you get to watch the piece come to life. So this was my very first one. Uh, my initials are down here, AS, in the year 23. Um, it's probably backwards to you. But <laughs> this is the unicorn, um, my first fully finished object. This was a frame that my boyfriend found from Home Goods um, that just worked perfectly. I loved the arch of it to go with this, this piece. So next up, um, I have a sweatshirt that I worked on. So I told you that my aunts and my mom loved doing cross stitch on sweatshirts. Um, so I'm going to pull the first one here. Hold on one second. So they would always do it on waist canvas. Um, so I bought some 14 count waist canvas. I found an owl pattern from May Deer Cross Stitch. It's called Owl with a Scarf. Um, you can find it on Amazon. It's just a small kit. It comes with everything you need. Um, again, I didn't use the fabric because I was stitching on a sweatshirt, but I had the 14 count waist canvas. So here is my very first sweatshirt piece. <laughs> um, I got just a white sweatshirt to put it on and look how cute he is. His little eyeballs and that little scarf and his little hair that's just kind of sticking up everywhere. I don't know if you could, can see the back stitching in the hair. Super cute. Um, the white on white snow was a little tough, but I think it looks really cute. So I used waist canvas for this. Never again will I use waist canvas. Never. <laughs> it was just a nightmare. Um, I remember my mom sort of pulling it out piece by piece, and she seemed to make it look so effortless. Like it just came out for her. For me, I, I could not get it. It just kept ripping. I, I tried spraying it with water to wet it. It just kept coming out. It was not working. Um, 
so I put it aside. I was like, I'm done with this. I'll, I'll never wear this sweatshirt. Like, project is over. My roommate grabbed it one night, and she spent the evening and just kind of pulled out as much as she could and trimmed it enough on the side so that you can't tell the waist canvas is there anymore. But underneath this owl, the waist canvas is all still there because I couldn't get it out. So it's really sturdy in there. <laughs> um, but it was a good learning experience. Um, it was super fun to stitch. Um, definitely harder than stitching on fabric, is stitching on a material like a sweatshirt where it's a lot heavier. <clears throat> um, but I, I did really enjoy it. So I think, you know, occasionally I think I'll continue doing more of these. So after that excursion with the waist canvas, I was like, well, I don't want to be done stitching on a sweatshirt just because of the canvas. And I discovered um, someone in a Discord group that I'm in, they posted about a water soluble canvas. And I was like, well, maybe I should try that and see if that's any easier. It seemed a lot easier to just let it dissolve <laughs> as opposed to um, trying to pull out the waste canvas. So I bought some water soluble canvas and um, I found a free butterfly pattern that came with one of the kits that I had purchased and just used some extra floss that I had from the unicorn. And let me grab that. So I grabbed a t-shirt that I have, just a regular t-shirt, and up in the corner I stitched this little purple butterfly. Um, might be kind of hard to see the colors, but it is like a dark purple and a light purple and then some black and um, some back stitching. But I used the, this as a test for the water soluble canvas just to see um, how it would come out. It was so easy. It was so easy. It just dissolved immediately in the water, a little bit of warm water. Um, you kind of had to swish it around a little bit and I did have to wash it after just to kind of get everything out. Um, but it's great. I love it. So now I have a t-shirt with this cute little butterfly that whenever I wear, I definitely get good compliments on. So this was a positive switching from waste canvas to water soluble. Definitely recommend it if you're looking to, to stitch on any type of t-shirt or material where you need the canvas to be gone. Um, okay, so next is I picked up a Mill Hill kit. Um, I wanted to do my first project with beading, um, and I thought maybe a little Mill Hill ornament would be the perfect size um, to kind of pick this up and start it. So I grabbed this in October and started it, and I wanted to finish it by Halloween. We had a Halloween party at our house this year, and I wanted to at least have it and have it completed and up by then. So this is Eyeball Martini by Mill Hill. Um, this is another fully finished. So this is a shadow box that my boyfriend had. He just had it on hand um, and we thought it looked great in here. Sorry about the glare. Um, but this is the eyeball martini. So it's got a lot of greens and then orange in the martini. The eyeballs are in there. <laughs> and then all of this beadwork. So there's beadwork all up here that you can see. There's beads um, that go down the side of the martini glass. Um, this spider here on the on this side is a treasure. So it's actually a large bead, if you can tell. Um, the spider up top here is stitched. Um, this was so much fun, and I had a great time with the beads. Um, it was tough at first because they wanted you to use two strands of floss with the beads, and I could not get two strands of floss and the bead through my needle. So I tried two separate needles to get this to work. Nothing worked. Um, I kept breaking them. Then I found beading needles. Um, who knew? <laughs> um, but I found them, purchased that, and it. after that, it was a breeze. The bead slips right over the needle. The head of the needle is super wide, but then it's flexible, so it kind of opens and closes, so you can easily thread it and then get it through the, the hole of the canvas. Um, this one was on perforated paper, so yeah. Um, just a lot of fun and, and a fun excursion to kind of see, you know, my work with beads. Now I'm ready for a Mirabilia, right? <laughs> I don't know about that, but um, that's my next goal. Um, so that one was a lot of fun. Um, next, I'm going to show you a big project I started working on in September. Um, so in January, 
I am going to be running the Dopey Challenge in Orlando um, at Disney. For those of you who don't know, the Dopey Challenge is four races in four days. It's a 5K, a 10K, a half marathon, and a marathon, back to back to back to back. <laughs> so it's going to be wild. Hopefully I survive. Um, I was going to go do it with a friend. Um, we're still running it together. Um, but my mom decided she would also come along. So when I knew she was coming, I thought this would be fun to cross stitch something for her and I to wear um, in Orlando at Disney together for this trip. So hold on one second. <laughs> So I went on eBay and purchased a pattern that I found and loved. It was called Mickey and the Gang. It's by Disney or Mickey Unlimited. Um, I think they used to do cross stitch kits maybe back in the 90s. I'm not exactly sure the year on this, um, but this is the kit I bought. It was super cute. I just loved the colors. I also loved the details on these characters. It really made it seem like they were the characters in the 90s that I'm used to. Um, and just something about it was so nostalgic and um, fitting for my mom and I to, to wear. So I got this and thought, I'll stitch this on sweatshirts for us to wear in Disney. Little did I know how much stitching actually went into this. You look at this and you think, oh, it's not that bad. It was a lot of stitching. So um, finally, last week, I finished my mom's sweatshirt. So here is her final product. Ah! Mom, if you're watching, Close your eyes. <laughs> um, this is just kind of a moth sweatshirt that I found. Um, and yeah, I've got the six characters and I just love it. Um, again, I use the water soluble canvas that I love so much. Um, but yeah, the details in this, it just came out so great. I'm, I'm really happy with all of them. Um, I started with Goofy in the center, then I went down to Minnie just to make sure I had enough uh, room from top to bottom. Then I went over to Mickey and Donald and did Daisy next. And then I saved Pluto for last because he's my favorite. So save the best for last. But this is her sweatshirt. I'll be giving this to her in December. So maybe I'll post like a reaction video or something, or at least a picture of her wearing it once, um, once I give it to her. But I'm super happy to have this done. Um, it was really fun to work on and each little square kind of felt like a mini finish when you were done because they're all together but separated so i had six mini finishes i guess along the way um but yeah super happy with this i thought it turned out really cute so she'll be wearing this um when we go to disney so those are all of my fully finished objects um next i have two finishes that i completed but they're not done into fully finished objects yet. So the first is um, a kit I bought online. I don't have the designer name again. Um, I, I think I tossed that when I first got it back in May. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but it is a Sailor Moon and it's for my boyfriend. It's a surprise uh, for Christmas. So um, I finally put all the stitches in um, and I will show it to you now. This was a large piece, as you can tell, um, and it was my first full coverage piece. So for this, I wanted to choose a kit that I thought would be easier to start with. So I chose a stamped kit, and that's why you can see um, on the fabric itself, it's got the key of all of your threads that you need. Um, it also had the full pattern on this thread behind her, which you can still see some in her legs and in the moon where the pattern is. I haven't washed this yet or ironed it or anything. I just finished it last week. So I still need to do all that to get the pattern out. Um, but it was a stamped kit. So that made it a lot easier for me to kind of tackle a full coverage piece. And now that this one is done, I think I'm ready to start my next one. <laughs> so um, it was enjoyable. Um, it was hard to get this done in time because I could only stitch it when he was not home. Um, which meant when I had breaks at work or if he was gone for the evening or something. So it was kind of hard to get this all done. Um, I started it back in May. It's like 43,000 stitches, so it's a lot. Um, but I'm so happy to have it done just in time for the holidays for a gift. So this is also a 12 count, um, which I don't love. 
and I probably will never do a 12 count again. Um, I had to use three strands of floss, which made it tough because you couldn't do the loop start. And, um, and the coverage is good, but there's still some places where because it's such a, a large count, it's a 12 count or small count, I guess. Um, yeah, I just, I don't love, love the coverage on it, but, um, I'm happy to have it finished. He loves Sailor Moon, so I think he'll really like this. Um, I think it turned out really well. I was a little worried about how her face was going to turn out, but that turned out really cute and clean. Um, some of the details missing, I think that would have been there in a full coverage piece with um, a different count, but overall, I'm really, really happy with this. So, um, yeah, that was a finish that I had. Next is a finish that I have. It's a finish for now, but I'm calling it a finish. Um, it's part of the Creepy Christmas Village style from Lola Crow. I'll put a link down in the description here. And it's a sal where there's going to be six ornaments released from now until Christmas, until December. So this is the first ornament. Um, ornament number two has been released already, and I think ornament three comes out this Friday. So I'm a little behind, <laughs> but I'm trying to just take it as I can. Um, and enjoy it. I want to get the ornaments done for Christmas, but that's it. Um, so this is the first ornament. It's still in the cue snap. Sorry about that. Um, look at these creepy, cute little Christmas carolers. I just thought they were so cute. I, I watched some of her styles before and love the work that she's done. Um, the, there was a library style that was just amazing. So much detail. Uh, I think I'd, I'd love to stitch that someday, even though I'm years behind on the sal, but it's just such a beautiful piece. So I've been following the work of Lola Crow and um, yeah, it's, I, I just really like it. So I knew that I would like these ornaments. Um, this is the called for fabric, called for floss. Um, it's elephant run by Fox and Rabbit. It's a 16 count. And I've been stitching three over one um, I wanted that bulky feel to these ornaments to make them kind of stand out a little bit more. So I went with three strands. Maybe that was too many. I probably could have gotten away with two strands. And I think for the next ornament, I will try to do two strands. It'll be a little less bulky on the back. Um, and the only adjustments I made were the snow that's falling. I added beads that I had left over from my Mill Hill kit and thought that'd be cute to add a little bead work in the snow and the outline of the ghosts I switched the green color for sulky glowy green that is a glow-in-the-dark uh, floss that I saw someone use on Instagram and thought it looked so cool so that's the only change I made I will try to put in a picture here of what it looks like in the dark it's super cool <laughs> hopefully you guys can see it um, but it just kind of gives another little fun characteristic to this ornament. So that is my finish for now, or yeah, finish number one on ornament number one. That's all the finishes I have since May. Um, so I feel like that's a pretty good progress for just getting back into cross stitch. Um, but now on to my whips. So these are all the projects I'm currently working on. The first one I'm going to show with you is a kit I bought online. Um, it's a lighthouse. Here's the kit. It came with all the floss and again it's a stamped kit so it does have the pattern stamped on the fabric. It is a 14 count and I got this originally um, as a gift but then I kind of switched ideas. So I started it but I haven't finished. Um, and I don't know when I'll pick it up. Maybe in the summertime when I'm kind of in the mood for a scene like this. Um, but obviously it has the full stamped pattern on it, so I'm not going to show you that. But I'll show you what I've been working on, and that is the top part here with the blues and the gray of the sky. I got a little bit down into the lighthouse here, to the side of the lighthouse, and these colorful sunset clouds here. Um, I haven't really gone too much over here. And then... I finished these trees here, which are beautiful. I love how this looks. Um, 
Yeah, this is 14 count. I'm using two strands of DMC floss that came with the kit, and I'm really enjoying it. It's, it's nice to have a stamped kit in the sense that you don't have to pay as much attention to counting, so it's great for when you're watching a movie or when you can't devote all your attention to cross-stitch, but you still want to do it. Um, that's when I've been been stitching it, but that has kind of gone on, gone on the back burner. I'll probably pick that up again sometime next year um, and keep working on it because I would like to finish it um, and hopefully give it away at some point. So next, I've already showed you my mom's Disney sweatshirt, so I'm going to show you the one I'm working on for myself. One second. So this is mine. Um, I chose sort of a navy blue sweatshirt for mine, and I am just getting started. So I'm. This is the water soluble canvas I was talking about. Um, I finished all the stitching of Goofy in the center. I just have his back stitching to do and um, a few French knots, but um, that's all I have left to do on Goofy. And yeah, so this. I have to have done by January. So it's going to be a focus piece the next couple of weeks. I'm going to try to get this done um, before I go in January. So that's how far I got on the sweatshirt. Next up in my whip parade, <laughs> I guess it's a parade, is uh, the Odyssey Sal from Quaternion Creations. This is a sal I joined. Again, it was... Um, a designer I, I followed on Instagram and just really liked the work that was being put out and decided to join my first stitch along. So I had never heard of a stitch along up until this point and I loved the idea of being able to stitch a product project with everyone at the same time and so I went a little crazy. I joined four stitch alongs. <laughs> you saw the Lola Crow um, ornament sal. This is the Odyssey sal. And um, I'll put links to all of these in the bottom in case you all want to join because they are still going on now. Um, this is the story of Odysseus um, from Greek mythology. And I will say that with each release that comes out, it is so cool because they put a little story about Odysseus in the description. So you kind of read the story and then you stitch the story. It's really awesome. Um, for this, I chose an 18 count Ada uh, Curry. I bought this off of Etsy. Um, I'll try to find the shop name. I don't know if I still have it. I can look, but um, I was really happy with this fabric. I love the color and um, I really wanted it to be sort of a, a curry-ish color. It might look a little bit more yellow than it is. It's kind of a, a deeper, Yellow, yellow than what's showing up on the screen. It's more like this, I guess. Um, but four parts have been released. I am all caught up, except I have more of the border to do on this side and along the bottom. So I haven't done the bottom border at all yet. The border is a lot, <laughs> so I've kind of been stitching it as I go. Um, but this is what it looks like so far. I am just thrilled with it. Um, I love all of these little motifs. Sorry, I think I lost you for a second. I, um, I love all of these little motifs that are on here. Um, there's just so much detail to it. I, I really have been enjoying it. I love the pops of red that are, are the secondary color. Um, the way that they're used just really make the piece kind of stand out a little bit more. Um, this little pig is probably my favorite. <laughs> he was a part of the second part of the cell. So we had already stitched this section here and then part two came out with Cersei and the swine and I saw it and I loved it. So within an hour I stitched it <laughs> because it was just so cute. I couldn't, I couldn't not stitch it. Um, but the whole thing is really fun. I am so excited to see where it's going to go. Um, we've got a lot to do. I think this goes until January, maybe February. Um, I also love this boat and the dolphin swimming in the water. The details are just beautiful. So yeah, this one's a lot of fun. The next part I think is released next week. So um, I'll pick that back up at that point, but having a lot of fun with that. I also, I don't have a lot of project bags, so I've been using these. I got these off of Amazon, but uh, I love that they're see-through so I can tell what project is in here and they've been the right size to kind of hold everything. So I'm happy with them, um, but yeah, I don't have any fancy project bags. Sorry. The next cell I've got is the Pixel Dragon Adventure cell from Flossy Fox Shop. 
um, another designer that I follow on Instagram. Love the patterns, always bright colors, always cute motifs, and knew immediately I wanted to, to join this one. So this is still in my nerd hoop. Um, I'm using the large nerd hoop for this one, but the fabric I'm, I chose is a 28 count even weave called Green Apple. Again, from an Etsy shop. I'll try to get the name below um, if I can find it. And I am stitching this one over one. So I debated doing two over two, three over two, how I wanted to stitch it. I just like the idea of having this be a smaller piece where the motifs were tiny. I was just loving the idea of tiny dragons <laughs> on my fabric. So this is the piece um, I'm working on. This is all part one. Part two comes out December 3rd, I believe. And here is my work so far. So I've got the little dragon in the corner. Underneath of it, he's got his helmet. There's the little chick, which is super cute. Um, his saddle is there. This is going to be his sword. This is a little watering can. And then I started a little bit down here, but this will be the second dragon, um, a little bigger. I think it's a fox dragon, uh, which I'm super excited about. But um, yeah, really loving the colors in this. Because I am doing 28 count, one over one, it is tough to see, and it is kind of hard on my eyes. So um, I usually only stitch this for about an hour, an hour and a half before my eyes go crazy, um, just because of that. But I love how tiny everything is just super tiny and cute. So um, I even had to get stitchy glasses <laughs> because I was having a hard time seeing. So I wear these now, which my boyfriend loves because my eyes look real big, but I wear these when I'm using this and I'm, I'm literally like this. So I'm looking through my glasses when I'm at the fabric and then I'm looking at my pattern through here. So <laughs> that, that's my stitchy, stitchy career, but stitchy glasses must have. Um, I don't know how people do it with higher count fabric, like 40 or 36, but I'm going to find out. I'm going to test it eventually. Um, anyway, yeah, so this is just really fun. I, I love the colors. I'm really happy with my fabric choice. Um, yeah, excited to see where the rest of it goes. So that is my next whip. And finally, I have one more whip to share. And that is the Christmas Wonderland Sal by Caterpillar Cross Stitch. They seem to do a lot of sals. Again, I'm new, so I don't know how often they do this, but they seem to always have one going um, and they do have kits that you can buy the whole thing. So you can get the fabric and the floss uh, pretty easily on their website. It all comes packaged very nicely. The floss comes on little cards like this. Um, Sorry, mine is a little messy, but it comes on cards like this. So you just take off the floss as you need it. You can put extra here on the ends. Um, really easy to use, and um, I really liked that design. So I am doing the Wonder Christmas Wonderland Sal. Um, here is how far I've gotten. So they are on part five already. I think there's only one more part to go. And I really just started this. I wanted this to be a Christmas piece and it seems like they're gonna be done really early. I wanted it to be more of like stitching around the holidays. So I've just lately been getting into the Christmas spirit and into the Christmas mood. So I pulled this out. Um, I did, I've been working on this tree in the center here. Um, I did a few of these little houses that will be up here. These are little skaters. This is gonna be an ice skating rink. And I'll probably end up trying to finish the ice skating rink next and then I'll move on to the motifs around it. Um, the kit also came with this adorable little hot chocolate needle minder so I love using that. Um, this one is a 16 count Ada that came with the kit and I'm really enjoying this one. This is a stitch I can grab and it's just fun and easy. Um, there's a lot of blocked colors so it's it's just a fun stitch. I'm, I'm really enjoying it and I'm hoping to make it last throughout the, the Christmas season. So I would like to finish it by the end of December if I can. So I've got a lot of work to do, but um, I'm not pushing myself yet. I've got time and I want to be able to enjoy it. So that is my final whip. Um, so next I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the patterns and things I've acquired since I started cross stitching again. Um, Obviously I bought a lot since May, <laughs> so I'm not gonna show everything. But um, 
Yeah, I bought some things that I'm going to try to find things to stitch on. So I got this 14 count Ada um, off of a D-Stash site on Facebook and just love the color. I have no idea what I will stitch on this. Maybe some ornaments, I thought. Um, I could see some like Christmassy things on here or I'm not sure. We'll see. But got that. Um, I also got from the same D-Stash an 18 count. This is a really light pink. I don't know if it's going to show pink on the screen or not. I guess you can see it a little bit against my sweatshirt, but this is a, a light pink, Ada. Um, so 18 count. I'm excited to see what I can find to stitch on that. Um, finally for fabric, I got a 32 count Belfast linen, hand dyed um, by Hand Dyed Fabrics PL. Tatiana is her name. She's also got a YouTube stitched by Tatiana. And I was watching her, her floss tube, and she was talking about how she was dyeing fabrics and she was gonna start selling them on her Etsy shop. She showed one of them on the floss tube and I fell in love. Um, I immediately went on her site and purchased it and I'm so happy I did. She is uh, in Poland, so it did take a while to ship and get here, but I wasn't in any hurry for it, so it was totally fine. Um, very responsive to everything, she was great. And look at this gorgeous fabric. It's beautiful. It reminds me of like autumn leaves kind of falling. Um, it's a little bit more brown than what you're seeing in the camera, um, like a little bit darker, but I just love it. I have no idea what I'm gonna stitch on this. Um, maybe a Bella Filipina or a Mirabilia. If you have any ideas of what you think might go on this, let me know. Um, but yeah, Hand Dyed Fabrics PL is the Etsy name. Uh, Stitch by Tatiana is the floss tube and she's great. I, I love this. I cannot wait to start stitching on this. It just feels so great. So that's all for fabric that I'm going to share. Next on to some of the patterns that I purchased. Um, these are all things that I'm I have goals for 2024. I'm still kind of putting everything together. I, I'll probably talk about that in a later video, but I'm going to be doing my first whip go board. I've never done that before, so I'm going to give that a go, see how it works. And just trying to formulate some of my other plans for 2024 and what I want to stitch on and accomplish. Um, but these are some of the patterns that you might see. I might throw them in um, at some point. The first one, and I'm obsessed with all these fancy ladies, <laughs> if you will. Um, this one is by Bella Filipina. It is Guy the Earth Goddess. She is just beautiful. I, I bought the bead chart, the bead pack that goes with it. So I've got all the beads. I just need to get the floss and a fabric to go with her. Um, but I really, I think I would like this to be my first Bella Filipina. I really like this one. Um, I just, the, the dress is beautiful. It's just stunning. So hopefully I'll start this one soon. Um, along the same lines, I discovered Lavender and Lace, their Celtic Ladies series. Um, and so I got all of them. <laughs> I got Celtic Winter. The dress is beautiful. Celtic Summer. Celtic Spring. Beautiful purple. Celtic Autumn. And I've seen online a color conversion for Celtic Autumn, where the dress is more orangey and more autumn colors. So I think I want to try to find that conversion and use that um, because I think it, it was just stunning. It was beautiful. So, And then finally, I got Celtic Christmas. I just love these. I, I definitely want to stitch all of them at some point. I'm in no rush, so it just can be as it is. But I'm trying to decide which one I should start next. Um, actually, if you have an opinion and want to let me know what your thoughts are, which one I should start first, uh, just comment in comment below and let me know which one you think I should start. I'm totally fine stitching out of season. I don't need to do winter or spring since that's what com is coming up. Um, but yeah, let me know what you'd want to see me stitch on and, and, and try first. Then next up I have a Mirabilia and this one is called The Kiss. Um, this I would like to be my first Mirabilia. Typically mirrors don't have 
men in them. Um, and so I saw this one and was sort of immediately drawn to it. I just think it's beautiful, the way he's holding her and giving her a kiss. Um, and her dress is just beautiful. So this is going to be my first Mirabilia. I'm going to stitch it. Um, I am going to ask for the fabric and some floss for Christmas presents. So hopefully I'll get some of that and maybe can start it in the new year. But if you have any ideas for what fabric I should use, this is an out of print Mira. And so the fabric that is recommended is called Apple Blossom by Wichelt. And I don't, I can't find it anywhere. I, I don't know where the Apple Blossom fabric is anymore. Maybe it's maybe it doesn't exist anymore so I need to find something that will um, go with this I think it's it shows a lot through here the pinks here in the background and then also around the border so I want to find something that will look will look nice with this if you have any ideas let me know um, but really excited about this one uh, for my first Mirabilia and next up I have a Dimensions Gold Kit Woodland Enchantress um, I wanted to try a Dimensions full coverage piece. So this is the one I chose. Uh, I think it's beautiful. I can't wait to get started. This is a full kit, so it came with the fabric, all the floss, and the beads as well that you need. So I could start this at any time, um, which maybe I will, but excited. I think this one will definitely be a 2024 piece. Finally, um, I've been watching Cottage Garden samplings, and they seem to have a series every year where they release a, a pattern each month that's part of the series. Two years ago, it was called A Year in the Woods, and they released an animal every month. And I love the series. I was looking through the 12 months, and almost every single one I liked and looked like fun to stitch. So I picked up one of them. My favorite was the beaver. <laughs> and look how cute he is. He's sitting there with his big tail, um, the fall leaves around him. So I am going to stitch this at some point, um, and I probably will pick up some of the other animals to stitch at some point as well. They also are doing, for 2024, their series will be a series of houses. So I think the first one they showed the pattern for, it's like a wintry house. It's got some um, snow falling, and I think there's a reindeer in it maybe. And then each month of next year, they will release a different house. I think there's going to be a hobbit house at some point, a castle. Um, some really fun ones. So I signed up for those to be auto shipped to me at the beginning of the month. Whether or not I'll complete them in the month, I'm not putting a time frame on it at this point yet. But um, yeah, I'm super excited to see all the different patterns because they put out some really great stuff. So um, check them out if you haven't as well. But this has gotten a little bit longer than I was expecting. So I apologize for that. If you have stuck with me to this point, Thank you very much. Um, I guess I had a lot more to say than I thought. Um, when you get talking about something you love and the craft that you're doing, it's easy to just kind of keep going. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I will probably be recording these videos maybe every two weeks, I'm thinking, will be a good pattern for me. Um, we'll see. You know, life gets busy, but I'm, I'm hoping every two weeks to be back and um, kind of share any updates on my projects and, and go from there. Um, but that's all I have for today. So if you feel like subscribing, if you want to like the video, that would be great. And if you are celebrating on Thursday, happy Thanksgiving. We are having some friends over and doing a little Friendsgiving, which will include a turkey and all the sides and some wine. So it's, it's it'll be a nice relaxing day. Um, but happy Thanksgiving to you if you're celebrating here in the U.S. And... Yeah, that's all I've got. So keep running if you're a runner, keep stitching always, and keep doing what you love. Um, and be kind to whoever you meet. The world definitely needs more kindness and love out there. So bye for now, until the next stitch.